All right, so the first set of buyers who ordered the iPhone 16 already started receiving their iPhones. And I must tell you guys, it's a little bit of mixed match feelings. Um, some people bought the phone very excited and after the, you know, opened the box and used the phone for a couple of hours and they realized there was no need to upgrade, but we were talking much about that later. So if you're watching this video, probably you're in the market or you're on the internet and you're planning to, you know, upgrade from your phones to the iPhone 16. So probably it could be from the older generation, could be from any series, say before the 12, but if you have the iPhone 12, you might be able to still upgrade and you would notice the difference but if you come in from say an iphone 13 all the way to the iphone 16 probably you might not be able to tell especially if you're not a tech enthusiast so let's start with the video a couple of points i just want to point out is after the review of the iphone 16 when apple you know made the word stage every september people go like some people have this turned on especially again people who love tech you know we constantly turn in to see the new iphone what upgrades are going to be in the new phone what is going to be different about the build quality and all that nonsense and all, even up to cameras because i think one of the most selling features of every smartphone out there today is cameras even if some buyers would like to say they would like a phone with you know a battery that would last all day but again camera is one of the most selling features because i think that is what these people always talk about during their keynote so i'm talking from apple to samsung oppo xiaomi they all brag about their cameras so let's jump into this first feature i want to talk about is why is no one buying the iphone 16 and why is there low demand on the market like i said if you watched the show when it was you know unveiled there was nothing too different from the iphone 16 compared to the iphone 15 and earlier on i talked about the iphone 13 if you're coming from an iphone 13 to an iphone 14 there is no huge difference other than the placement of the action camera and then if you're going from the 14 to the 15 it's the same thing so other than the action camera the difference is the 15 is built with a titanium this is why i said there's been no difference if you're coming from any phone from let's say the iphone 13 so consumers are beginning to notice that year after year apple do not necessarily improve on their new smartphones or on their new production nothing really changes when it comes to the builds so in terms of build quality we all know what to expect whenever you have an iphone on your hand it just feels premium feels different compared to any other smartphone when you hold it on your hand however when it comes to innovation people do not really see the difference if you're moving from a 13 to a 14 and even from 14 to a 15 or from a 15 to a 16 this is how it has always been if you remember clearly or if you did watch the keynote but if you did not watch the unveil i can still tell you you know how apple every year when they're releasing a new iphone how they come and they say we've come with a new whole design guys can you please compare the iphone 15 to the iphone 16 and please tell me what is whole new design about here other than the placement of the action camera do you see anything different well i don't i don't know about you but i don't see anything different so apple bragged about a new design on the iphone 16 and then when consumers had this phone on their hands they couldn't really spot the difference other than again the bloody action camera or the new action button that you push to open the design nothing really changed other than instead of metal now apple uses titanium so it makes your phone pretty lighter to be honest if i if i will be 100 percent honest i still prefer the build of the iphone 12 13 and 14 those felt more premium on my hand compared to when i'm handling a something built of titanium i just think the heavier it feels it feels more compact and more premium on my hand don't know about you leave your comment down below you know every year when apple comes up with a new phone the camera seems to be a, li a little bit better than the one from the previous year. However, if you provide a very good light source and then take a picture from last year's phone and that of this year, you might not be able to spot the difference unless you're making a real comparison, you know, like a video or a comparison photo. And still, sometimes you still cannot spot the difference. You can't spot things in detail. So camera wise, I honestly, I do not think anything has, you know, really, really upgraded when it comes to the camera other than the placement of the action button, which again, in my opinion, do not necessarily serve the purpose.
I think it would have been better if the camera button was placed just below a little bit below so it is very easy to access to you know take a shot or make a video you can really dial down with that button and you don't feel stressed again this is something you already have in the camera app you could just go in dial in your menu and then look for the features you want and that's that apple intelligence is another thing apple bragged about so we all know google pixel came out with their own intelligence you know samsung intelligence or galaxy intelligence like all these are uh, ai features which again new smartphones tablets and computers even smart watches coming up these days or coming out in 2024 i believe we're going to see more of this in 2025 so most of these you know uh, gadgets they do come with ai features so apple intelligence is just an apple version of ai other than siri which has been you know really dumb for the past couple of years and sometimes really annoying so the apple intelligence again it's supposed to be like siri 2.0 however if you buy the iphone now like the people who bought the iphone now and got your iphones they are not getting siri 2.0 or apple intelligence or apple ai out of the box so this means they will need to wait for ios 18.1 but that being said and now we're going to talk about the price and the storage if you will be gushing out or dashing out a 800 pound or 800 dollars for a smartphone i think 128 gigs <laughs> is a no go for 2024 like it costs nothing when i say nothing i mean maximum it's going to cost apple say four dollars to five dollars which i believe is still less yeah instead of starting from 128 gigs why don't you make 264 gigs the base model if you're gonna brag on your presentation that your phone just got better or your camera just got upgraded shoot high quality you know footages and videos and all that so the codec i would expect to consume more memory so if you're going to be shooting in 4k and i can see there is 4k one yeah 4k 60 now even up to 4k 120 if you use the pro max if you have these features in your cameras you should give more space now the design of the dynamic island this for me is personal i am not a fan of the dynamic island i swear down and there is just one reason to be honest i am a mobile gamer i mo i game on my mobile phone like you gaming and in the middle of your screen there is a hole and when you tap on that place sometimes it's not responsive and end up dying because there is a hole in my screen called dynamic island i believe apple should have just followed what pixel or even samsung are doing make that hole a dynamic island make it useful only when needed so it could be like a punch hole and then if you need the island you just tap on that and then it expands the island comes up you don't need it you tap back it goes back in but no it's just there on your screen and i hate when i'm watching a movie netflix for example or just a random youtube video you're trying to watch full screen and then there is just that black bar just covering you know most of my videos i just say apple uses like suffering and smiling like that thing there it's not useful apple trust me i believe you can do way better than what you have as your dynamic screen you can make that a little bit different make that smaller or just push it up to the left or to the right of the top of the screen and that will be way more appreciated than you know that thing just covering my face when i'm trying to watch a video and the 60 hertz refresh rate for a base model is still crazy i'm just saying like these are things i believe apple can fucking improve on instead of just giving us the same product over and over again on the same you know like the same format nothing really changes other than just coming up with a new chip so 60 hertz refresh rate for the basic iphone is still crazy because i don't think there is any android in the world where you pay 800 pound or 800 dollars and then you will be getting a 60 hertz refresh rate in 2024 i would expect at least if apple is not going to you know commit to the market and go or, or commit to their consumers and go all the way to you know 120 hertz refresh rate at least a uh, 90 hertz refresh rate it should be something they should be able to give to their consumers so you might not understand what i'm saying until you use a phone that has 120 hertz refresh rate then you can tell the difference whenever you're scrolling through you know your screens even as things as basic as tiktok or online or gaming or anything just the response is snappier 
both are smooth and it feels appealing to your eyes. So should you be upgrading? What phones do you have? Do you necessarily need to upgrade? It's a question you must ask yourself before you make that upgrade. Again, like I said, if you're coming from the iPhone 13, you're pretty all right, to be honest. Long as your battery life still can carry you the whole day, you're still fine. Your camera is not bad, but if you're coming from old device, say from an iPhone 12, yeah, sure, you can go ahead with the upgrade. From 11, yeah, sure, you can give an upgrade. But if you like 13, trust me, there is no big deal. Nothing too changed from the 13 all the way to the 16. Like I said, I do prefer the build quality of the older phones because they felt more premium. E.g. the 14 felt really premium on my hand. You know, the first week is not actually going as planned for Apple because people are not really buying into the design language. And come on, if you have an iPhone, 14 15 i mean what is wrong with what you have i'm sorry to disappoint you if you came to watch a video that would make you or convince you to really buy the phone but guys from all these um things i've just said to me personally this is the reason i'm not upgrading but regarding airpods apple watches i did say if you do really want to upgrade on those yeah sure why not with that, I'll leave you here and if you watch the video listening to me all the way to this point why don't you consider liking subscribe to the channel and leave your comment down below what do you think will you be upgrading or you'll be waiting for a new design when apple uh, finally decide to make a new design next year i'll see you guys in the next video peace out